Uh, hi, this is uh, Jagan, um, and I am an open source enthusiast. So in this video, uh, we are going to uh, I am going to demonstrate about the open source custom DNS firewall and an open source VPN solution as well. Okay. So uh, uh, so if I say DNS firewall, right? There are uh, uh, there are many such um, DS, uh, DNS firewalls already available as open source. So let me show you the list. So if you can see this, right? Cisco's Open DNS is available, and we have uh, our uh, our Cloudflare, which is also uh, an uh, DNS firewall, and uh, Google's Public DNS, then Komodo Secure DNS, Quad9, Verisign DNS. All these. Categories comes under the DNS firewall category. So, uh, before jumping jumping to the demonstration, let me uh, quickly explain what is a DNS firewall is. Uh, security functionality integrated into the uh, into the DNS is called as the DNS firewall. So, since DNS act acts as the root of the internet, right? So, any devices you take, um, the whole internet revolves around the DNS server. Since the DNS is going to be the phone book, right? The name to IP conversion and the reverse IP to name conversion. So, if we uh, considering this root, which is the DNS, when we apply a security inside the DNS, then we can say we can stop the threat at the root itself, which is the DNS. Right? Hope that makes sense. And uh, what about this open source custom DNS um, firewall? And uh, what is the difference actually it makes when you build your own DNS firewall? And uh, and these open source DNS firewalls, which already exists, um, you can just Google yourself. Um, the main important thing I would like to highlight is uh, it's very simple, right? All these DNS firewalls, whatever you say, which is already available uh, as open source, uh, these DNS firewalls, you don't have any control and visibility over that. Okay, so when you don't have a control and when you don't have a visibility, what it is doing, then you cannot say as a security person that you have a visibility in your network, you have a visibility in your mobile phone, you have visibility in your server, you have a visibility in what is hap exactly happening on your network and your, all your dependent devices, whether it is going to be an enterprise network or your personal device, right? So the more the visibility will give you the answer for, for, the, uh, for the better control, okay? So uh, the difference between the uh, so that's the actual difference between the custom DNS firewall and uh, the DNS firewall which is already available. Okay, so uh, now hope you you don't have any access to these uh, DNS firewalls which is already available in public, right? So as I mentioned earlier, to be very specific, when you have when you have uh, good visibility, only then you will be able to give control. So only if you we have the good visibility and control all together, then you can be a better security person. Right. So, uh, what I recommend is you can build your custom DNS firewall yourself and host it on on-premise or in the private cloud like OpenStack, KVM, Proxmox, Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware ESXi or you can put it on the public cloud platforms like uh, Linode, GCP, AWS and Microsoft uh, Azure and whatever platform is available today. And uh, this DNS, yes, it, run, it runs on the uh, CentOS versions. and uh, and uh, I will come. I get back to this VPN um, a bit later. So I will. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview on the uh, architecture part on the custom DNS firewall, whatever we have. So if I say DNS, right? What this custom DNS firewall does is um, it takes care of the IP addresses and the domains. Okay, just the two parameters. It can inspect the IP address. It can check the IP address as well as the domains altogether. Okay, uh, during the forward lookup and also at the uh, uh, when when there is a reply from the destination server, I mean the return traffic on the forward lookup as well as the reverse lookup, both it can do the inspection. Okay, so now um, uh, let's go by one by one. So if I say access control list, right, it takes care, uh, it takes it, it it takes the action during the forward lookup, and moreover, uh, this custom DNS for is is pretty straightforward and it is constructed on the bind software and uh, certain automations and uh, uh, and uh, AI and ML logics are written using the Python. So this custom DNS firewall is powered by Python uh, and the bind which is the uh, basic DNS and uh, and the operating system is CentOS. 
Okay, that's the combination. Okay, so now uh, if I say access control list, right, it deals only with the IP address that is handled inside the uh, bind DNS software. So here, uh, what we are doing is that we are just connecting to many open sources databases because we cannot predict any IP addresses. So we use the, the plenty of open source databases, and we're just having the least spam score will be applied to this access control lists, uh, uh, which will uh, which will be uh, uh, which will be where these IP addresses will be applied to the access control list, and thereby uh, even the request will not go out go out from the DNS firewall or the DNS server. Okay, it will just get blocked. Okay, and next architect very important architecture is all the zone files only. So if I say zone files, if it's a whitelist zone file. Uh, it is just a simply thing right if something is getting blocked because of any false positive because of the open source databases like IP addresses or domains you can go to this whitelist zone file and you can allow it and a blacklist zone file uh, as the name mentions right you can uh, block very specifically if something you don't want to see okay so and ne next another one is the genius zone file I had written it twice that's a difference so this genius zone file makes the total difference in this bind DNS so this particular zone file is connected to our uh, API, uh, which is our threat intelligence API powered by AI and ML artificial intelligence and machine learning that can do the prediction against the domain parameters and mainly the domain names and its standards. Okay, and it applies uh, uh, an algorithm which is equivalent to a Larry Page algorithm with 30, 35 rule sets it has to validate a domain whether it is good or bad. Uh, and it also parallelly uh, has the uh, categorization, which is the natural language processing, um, something similar to it can predict uh, what this domain actually deals with, uh, like sports or, uh, or the, the games or pornography or sex or uh, anything. It does this prediction. That feature is also available. So both these uh, AML, whether it is categorization or the good or bad domains, all these things go into this both ghost club get clubbed together inside the same genius zone file. Since it is best prediction based on the AML base, so we named it as the uh, genius zone file. And next is the RPZ zone file, which is very straightforward. Again, the known open source databases uh, with respect to the domains and IP addresses has been pushed into the zone file to block. And just below that, you have a category zone file, which will not be visible to you uh, in the form of user interface because the well-known or the most bad known domains with respect to the information categories that are that which which should not be overridden like for example the pornography right pornography and many such violent related sites or uh, hacking related stuffs uh, whatever is there and the dark web for example those things has been blacklisted here and you will not be having a GUI to control this category zone file if something gets blocked uh, you need to go ahead and whitelist it on your own risk. Okay, that's what uh, it deals with. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, before jumping into the uh, GUI, um, let me finish that uh, the other parts also. What are the DNS firewall features? So if I have the uh, if I say DNS firewall features, it is nothing but a DNS IP address. Okay, so that DNS IP address can be integrated similar to this. That's what I was talking about. These are all just IP addresses. This IP address is what you can do is you can integrate with the firewall to make it better and you can directly integrate that IP address to the VPN act, VPN server, uh, which I'm going to show it shortly. And you can, as, a, as I mentioned on the proxy server demonstration, you can integrate the DNS firewall IP to the proxy server and you can uh, connect uh, the, and you can integrate the same DNS firewall IP address to, the, to your uh, cloud infrastructure, virtual machines, whether it is public cloud or private cloud, it can be any any application based server it doesn't mean that so it should only go into the websites and web application servers it can even go into the exchange email exchange servers or the FTP servers or whatever server you have right you can put the DNS so it gives it gives a security at all levels of the network infrastructure components since it's a DNS based firewall okay and and the uh, before getting into the demonstration, and this is also needs to be completed. So here in the demonstration, I will be uh, I, we cannot just demonstrate the DNS firewall uh, just like that, uh, having just because DNS firewall just has an IP address exposed to you. With that, we just having an IP address, and you are sitting behind a broadband connection. You cannot uh, show you cannot show the test results. Uh, as, uh, since just having a DNS IP address, right? You need to have it integrated. 
to any of these components so that you will be able to see what is getting blocked and what is getting allowed. So similarly, what I have done is in the same video, um, uh, I have uh, integrated an open VPN access server through the, DN through the custom DNS firewall which has been built. So thereby, a user can enjoy privacy through the open VPN and he can have the security through the custom DNS firewall altogether. So since it is going to be the open VPN, which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is of high standards uh, security based uh, VPN tunneling, so uh, it is it is available as open source and free um, for the uh, which is open VPN connect uh, connect application for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. It is of very high standards and it's good enough. Okay, so. There are certain licensing comes uh, when uh, when you are adding more devices onto your OpenVPN access server. Um, okay, so those prices um, uh, I don't want to discuss on this video. I'll just uh, I'll just speak about the uh, uh, technical aspects here. Okay, so uh, so uh, jumping onto the demonstration. So let me show the uh, uh, DNS firewall graphical user interface under the VPN server. So this is our. Uh, uh, this is our DNS firewall, which is hosted on the uh, public cloud, and uh, this is the IP address. Okay, this is, the, this is the this is the cloud IP address. Okay, uh, I mean the, the cl our cloud's DNS firewall IP address 35.186.146.28. Um, just built for that demo paper demo purpose, and we have an uh, VPN access server which is also hosted on the uh, same public cloud. Okay. And I have logged in, and I have created a special user called as a open, um, okay, to to show you the demonstration of the integration between the uh, VPN access server and the DNS firewall all together. Okay, so and here uh, what I have done is in the same VPN access server I have done some configuration settings under the uh, VPN settings. I think I just got timed out. Let me log in once again. And it is open VPN. Okay, so let me go to the configuration. Let me take you to the network settings quickly and uh, the, uh, the DNS server IP address. I think it's under the uh, VPN settings. The DNS server IP, yeah, it's here. And you can, can you see this? This is my. VPN access server which is hosted on the public cloud. There is an option shown here as the primary DNS server. Have clients use the specific DNS servers? And so what it happens is it enforces the users with the custom DNS firewall. So what is my custom DNS firewall IP 35.186.146.28? So how I make so this is my custom DNS firewall, right? I have uh, I have uh, the full control on it with the total visibility in the in the form of a dashboard with this URL 35.188.146 then 28.8000, right? Uh, now I am having full control because I will be able to whitelist, blacklist, and I will be block, and I can show you the full demonstration using this graphical user interface. So I am having um, two things here. One is the DNS firewall with full visibility and control with a GUI dashboard, and I am having an open VPN access server, uh, which is already having the uh, DNS IP address enforced onto it. So any user is getting connected through this VPN access server, uh, through this VPN access server, they will be getting these, uh, getting the custom DNS firewall IP which is hosted in our public cloud. Okay, right. So I hope you got that scenario. Now, what I have done uh, in my machine is that right, I have already uh, uh, already connected my uh, Windows laptop to this open uh, to the to this uh, open vpn access server and this is my name here open okay and even i have connected my mobile phone also with the same user account okay so both are working all together now what we are going to see here is that um, speaking with respect to the privacy yes open vpn access server already does that already does it because that's what a vpn server does it gives you the privacy no 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 one can peep in what you're doing so you have the privacy and why i have integrated the custom dns firewall is that right though you have a secure tunnel so 
inside the tunnel whatever data traffic that is flowing it needs to be kept clean so i am integrating the dns firewall uh, onto it so that i get i have both the privacy as well as the security it doesn't mean that you, uh, you should only use the custom dns um, you can also integrate many open dns firewalls which is already available and you can go ahead and uh, uh, configure on the uh, VPN access server page here you can put if you want you can write 8.8.8 or you can put four nines and uh, many any or uh, open DNS IP uh, it's, it's up to you but uh, from my point of view what uh, I am suggesting is that uh, it's always better to have a custom DNS firewall where you will be having more visibility and control okay so that's what security actually deals with okay now uh, let me show you the power of this DNS firewall and let me show you some some features here that you had how you can manage it so what I'm going to do is that here see all these things whitelist and blacklist it's, it's pretty straightforward I will demonstrate you that but I'm not going to touch or change anything with genius RPC and category because this is the total protection it is giving for the customers getting connected onto it and uh, I don't want to do changes over there but what I will do is I will uh, show you some uh, how to whitelist and how blacklist works and if anything goes uh, with any false positive with these three security zone files genius rpcd in category I can go ahead and whitelist onto it so that I'll get access to the particular site at my own risk okay so so let me demonstrate it um, okay so uh, I'll show you the drawing here. So the VPN stuff. Okay, this is how the VPN uh, is getting connected. If you could see, um, I have this Open VPN server here. Okay, and I have my uh, DNS custom DNS firewall, which is already hosted. As I mentioned, as I shown you, explained the same VPN access server. I have this IP address of this DNS server integrating back to this server. So that way, whatever users they try to communicate through this VPN tunnel once they get initiated. Whether they, are, whether they are using uh, Tata or ACT Broadband or Geo or Verizon or whatever maybe the service provider, right? When they're trying to initiate a VPN tunnel to this open VPN access server, to the specific server, they will always uh, get uh, this DNS overridden, uh, overridden for all these people who are getting connected to this VPN tunnel, irrespective of the condition that whatever ISPs they use, even if you use hotspots or any Airtel, Geo, whatever it is, right? They have their own DNS servers. But when you initiate the tunnel to this open VPN access server, the deciding authority will be the custom DNS firewall. Okay. If you put policies onto this, the whoever is getting connected through it, they get the security at the same time, more control, you know how to control them because you'll get the total visibility of what is happening with all these users over there. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's uh, quickly jump on to the uh, demonstration here. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is my OpenVPN access server. And inside the OpenVPN access server, I have given my custom DNS firewall IP address, which is this custom DNS firewall IP. It looks the same. And I have access to the DNS firewall dashboard. Okay, so what the dashboard exactly shows is that, right, uh, it will give you the uh, total threat handled um, handled on daily basis like for example this is ml report stands for machine learning reports you can see a pie chart here and uh, you can see a lot of categorization being handled and um, this graph tell you which is good and which is bad and what are the what is the total amount of kit it receives and see uh, how much amount of categories getting uh, listed okay next is the uh, denied reports so if i say denied reports it takes time time because it is posted on the blog it's not on my local environment. Um, how much, what are the things that is getting denied? It's updated here, okay, with respect to the percentage. Then the threat report charts I can see. So not only just displaying the graph, you can download it in the form of a CSV file, okay? So threat reports, right? The I, As I mentioned earlier, the, the zone file name Genius and RPZ, they handle the threat intelligence here and uh, how who is how much they are blocking according to the traffic and you can select the dates whatever you want and you can download the csv and you can just go ahead and see the full data uh, which ip address or uh, which machine try to browse what with ip or which is found to be a malicious ip all the data will be here with full visibility okay and uh, if you go down it's going to be the same thing here in this form of a bar chart and let me go quickly to the query reports Text team okay. Query reports 
if i say what are all the machines that is um, are trying to um, if i say what are the machines trying to talk to this dns all these things are getting highlighted here you can download the csvs again so total query reports and the another thing very important thing that we need to see here is the the dns settings part where you will have the provision to a uh, whitelist blacklist and uh, the categorization part you can do it okay so on the dns settings part okay now what i can do is for example i want to uh, uh, block certain domains like iodar.com actually it's a, it's a good website just for demonstration purpose i'm showing it here okay so uh, it's getting loaded on on my machine okay and let me open another website called app vuex.com uh, maybe um, i think this is uh, this is in my uh, maybe i have uploaded it on the blacklist and maybe i didn't remove it and let's check with uh, pyra alone which is pyra.com okay so uh, the scope of this demonstration is to show how i am having the control here okay if, the, if this particular site is getting loaded and i want to block it okay so what i need to do is i need to open the graphical user interface and uh, let me choose blacklist and uh, let me add the url if i say url is just the domain name and let me show it as pyoda.com okay uh, i am going to just blacklist it and add on to that site to get loaded so let me see what happens Yes, that's applied. I think it's updated. So, uh, I believe it should get blocked, right? So, if I give you NS lookup, it should go to the denied page. Say, so, see here, it says deny.dataking.com. It's getting denied. And if I go ahead and uh, try the same site here, it should go to a block page actually. Uh, maybe let me uh, open another session, a new session. or uh, still loading but uh, actually it has got redirected uh, so let me open a new browser and uh, or let me try here uh, let me clear the history the cache of the browsers let me clear it and close it start it and let me try with fiora.com it should get blocked as if it's blocking Uh, it looks like it is st still stored on the cache, but here uh, it is actually um, it's redirecting me to the uh, denied page. It is already uh, it's getting blocked. So let me revalidate it. Let me try with an incognito page. Maybe the number of times I have browsed. Um, it looks like it's still loading. Uh, maybe I need to clear all my cache and cache here. So let me try with appx.com. Maybe I have not tried it. So let me go back. So I am adding uh, appfx.com as well. Let me just check with this nslookup commands once it gets updated so you can get some clear idea. So let me open my uh, command form. It shows denied. And if we go for IOTA, it again shows the denied page. So let me check FVX. Means... There's no problem with FVX. 
Ora... Needs to be blocked. So let me check with the uh, Google Chrome. We check with AppVX. Okay, AppVX look good, but I mean, let me see. Uh, on my graphical user interface, let me try to troubleshoot it. You fire.com exit elsewhere. Let me uh, take a quick check. Actually, um, let me be very specific. .com. It is available on the blacklist and the page is getting denied and uh, and let me check the same thing from my mobile phone so AppVX is not a problem here it's getting blocked so let me check from my phone let me go to my phone and let me take a check chat um, uh, yeah honestly I am having my pyda.com denied in my mobile phone for some reason um, maybe it's because of the cache I'm sure it's because of the cache uh, that it's getting loaded here um, in my phone it is showing me a very clear denied page okay so so what I can do is um, let me show these two proofs in the form of the logs shown it's definitely it's my cache issue they are uh, uh, let me see if it is getting uh, denied here so let me go back to the logs let me grab grab pyoda.com okay so so if i am um, let me uh, go to my mobile phone and open this page again and can you see can you see it's getting blocked actually very honestly so look at the spider.com it's getting rewritten to spider.com and it is under the blacklist database and it is getting redirected to the deny.demabusiness.com which you are able to see it here okay so my phone it uh, it has it is very clearly showing that it is going to the denied page and let me try appvx.com from my phone so that's already working but still let me have a cross check vx dot com okay if i click go on my mobile phone appvx dot com yes it says denied and it is already blocked okay so let me close it and let me filter it filter the logs with appvx dot com filter it out with appvx dot com so okay let me close this page let me open an another page and can you see it actually fire.com it's getting blocked and also appix.com is getting blocked so what i would like to do here is let me go back and uh, whitelist these two domains okay or i will remove these two from the blacklist so that um, it, it just goes out from here and uh, it'll be resolving and it and it, it passes through okay so let's let's check that so let me go back so let me clear uh, let me go to the um, whitelist I'm sorry let me go to the blacklist let me go to the remote and pyora.com Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just submitting it. I'm just taking it out from my blacklist. That by both uh, gets passed through. Okay, I have uh, many cache issues on my computer. 
Okay, now let me go to the command line and just validate it on the computer itself. If I go to nslookup.pyro.com, it should pass through. Yes, he's working. And the AppX, yes. Uh, now AppX needs to be, needs to get removed from the list. So let me check it here. And you are at to get the startup details something here. Just see the mail. So let me search for this DB. Oh my God. Uh oh, this guy has captured him in the genius DB. So what I need to do is, it's a false positive. So I need to override this false positive condition. So let me go ahead and whitelist appvx.com. Yeah. Maybe this is the answer. This is how you can troubleshoot it. I am whitelisting it. Just on the email second. I need to whitelist. I need to add it. And then I need to submit. Can you please share this contact detail for the. It's because of the genius DB. Now, oh, man. So, contact is not. The prediction says he's back. Okay, now I am permanently whitelisting him on my whitelist. Provide such errors because of the prediction. So, I have whitelisted him. Um, let me go back and see the same in a slow cup He must get passed through. Yes, he's working. Okay, now let's go to the logs. Let's go to the logs of the DNS server and let's check for AppUX. Okay, I have already got an answer. And uh, let me take my phone and uh, let me can go. It says pass through and he should get uh, whitelisted here and he should be lo loading onto my. Well, we are trying to get a few other investors. Okay. I'm using my mobile phone to test it. Let me open the browser again. So, pyrodog.com must work. Okay. It's just a cache. Both are getting actually whitelisted. And you could see he'd see the logs very clearly for AppVX. Since it has been whitelisted and it has been allowed, You'll be able to see the logs here. It is passing through the whitelist and it also says pass through, meaning he can go out. And the same thing can happen for the pyro.com also. Grab it and let go. Uh, let me uh, use this and just give a quick refresh on .com. And maybe there can be some logs here. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, it looks like yes, it won. Pyro.com is going out. Yes, I have. Yes, Pyro.com is going out. He's working on my phone also. Okay. I can, so but, uh, it has been Apex has been whitelisted and Pyro is loading by uh, default. So let me go ahead and just quick and give a give quick NS so lookup against sure. Pyro.com as well. So he should also work. Yes, he's working. Now you're able to see some NS lookup output and Apex he should not get blocked. Mm -hmm. So I need to keep okay, I need to show you the logs. I need to sure use a grep condition and if I give an NS lookup yeah. against appx.com, he says he is whitelisted and he's loading on my phone. Now if I take my phone, yes, yes, please. That and if I'm checking for so appx.com, yes, he's working. He's getting loaded also on my uh, mobile phone. Yeah. And uh, if yes, I go to pyra.com. Yes, he's also getting loaded. So if I'm trying it from my mobile phone with respect to Pyro.com, yes, he's getting loaded on my um, mobile phone. Yes, he's loaded. The pages are getting loaded on my machine. Now let me take my browser and do a quick refresh. Quick refresh, and he should be there on the logs. Yes, he's getting logged. Right. So, and uh, if you could see, right, whether it is uh, pyra.com or it is appx.com, this is my VPN server IP address, correct? This 34.93.15.200 is my VPN server IP address. See this? This is my VPN server IP address. And uh, if I am doing some NS, NS lookup, this is going to be my custom DNS firewall IP address. Okay. See this here, when I am trying to NS lookup appx.com, he is the resolver who is my custom DNS firewall. See, does it match? So 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 35.196.146.28, 
and similarly for appfix.com if you could see he is the resolving address which is the same DNS firewall so that's what the security is all about and uh, let's check some malicious website here now we are speaking about whitelisting and blacklisting uh, which is already working um, both the uh, appfix.com and pyra.com um, it's loading let's check cross check I just don't want any false positives so it's allowed it's allowed yes both are working now uh, let me take uh, an example from the uh, other architecture zone files so for example the uh, rpz zone file let me take one domain from the genius zone file and one from rpz zone file and one from category category i can show it as 123any.com this pornography website let's check that so now uh, let me go to the rpz zone file so let me take this particular website from rpz and let me hit ns lookup it should say that it's getting denied now let me quickly go through this and uh, let me paste that file so that I can check for logs okay so uh, let me um, open this and NS look up this one okay okay let, let me see what actually happened is that it says this RPZ is going to be this zone file and uh, when I'm trying to reach this particular site which I was trying to hit it says you need to redirect to uh, business.com and actually just got redirected to the business.com that's a malicious website okay so that's tested with RPZ DB now let me check with the genius DB and uh, let me uh, take anything that looks very weird domains there are a lot of weird domains in the list so So let me check what I can do it here. So let uh, let me uh, take this site www.hatch.rootservice.net, uh, which is updated on the Genius Zone file that you see on the notepad, right? It's Genius DB. Previously I checked with RPZ DB, and I'm checking with the Genius DB. Now let me check for the logs again. Okay, let me capture it. Let me capture it first on the, my DNS firewall. Okay, now I'm going to give you NS lookup. Can you see? Okay, let me see the logs here. When I was giving NS lookup, it says that this gets here and it just goes to redirected. And similarly, my thing it is getting this page. Okay, that's with respect to the RPZ, and we have tested with Genius also. Now what is the other zone file that we need to test and is the category zone file right uh, it's 123any.com it's a pornography website I, I know it let me check that it says deny okay let me just uh, see on my server whether he's trying to block it 123any.com already yes he's doing it and let me show you this it's getting trapped so 123any.com if you're trying to surf the category db catches you and it says you go to deny.dm.jamadani.com now well, let me go here and let me see if this works good okay cool that's getting blocked and let me try and uh, all these things that which I was getting blocked let me browse one from the uh, category and this is from the genius um, yes good and another from RPZ cool yes it's working category DB RP, uh, genius db and rpz db yes it's blocking so uh, most of the threads are getting redirected to the access denied page because of the dns server okay so so uh, i hope i have uh, completed all the features with respect to the dns firewall okay so uh, uh, actually
access control list, so it's a forward lookup, whitelist, blacklist, genius, RPZ zone file, category zone file. Okay, I, I believe I, I forgot to show you the categorization part that happens on the genius zone, zone file. So what, uh, let me go through the web interface. Okay, on the right pane under the DNS settings under my DNS uh, firewall GUI, I have the categorization area, category wise blocking panel. Okay, I have some checkboxes here. Uh, with with whatever categorizations that we are going to do if you just you can do some multiple checks on the various information categories and once if you hit submit uh, what happens is that for every 60 minutes right once this one r get passes away and further from next r onwards it starts to capture the traffic with respect to those categories that whatever you have checked and you have saved okay so those things will get blocked after an hour and it keeps on learning the traffic from your DNS it, it predicts and it starts to blocking and if there is a false positive no problem you can just go ahead as I mentioned to you earlier you can just go ahead and whitelist the same okay so I think I have covered all the features with respect to the open source custom DNS firewall and I have demonstrated the uh, open VPN uh, open VPN access server also um, in our case, the OpenVPN access server has the uh, uh, has the option to give the DNS firewall IP addresses so that the uh, customers, when they're trying to initiate the VPN connection from their mobile phones, Android, iOS, or Windows, Linux, or Mac platforms, they will be forced to use the DNS firewall, whatever is mentioned here. So since this is going to be the custom DNS firewall, you have the full visibility and control, thereby you'll have a better security. So this DNS firewall can be hosted on an on-premise solution or any public or private cloud solution. Okay, so I have completed all the uh, all the explanation and the, with respect to the features involved on the custom DNS firewall and the VPN access server. Okay, this is a complete open source solution. Okay, I hope this information was uh, this video. I hope this video was informative and uh, thank you for watching.